Welcome back into the back half of the first round of 2019. Mock it up before you fuck it up. You can catch us on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handlers. I'm at IMC Myers. Jason is at J Wayne's World. Big Co is at Dynasty Big Co. And be sure to check out this nice little website we've been working on. So uh, check that out. All sorts of uh, good player pages and all the all the stuff we've ever done is is over there. So be sure to check that out. Without the F- further ado, theffdynasty.com. Theffdynasty.com. You can also access the Patreon page from over there and get you a five dollar holler. More content after six months, you get a free shirt. You know the deal. Holler at your boys. Without further ado, let's get to pick one ten. That's usually where. Yep. <laughs> That's usually a little where, slow in the draw. Yep. All right. Well, sorry. Pick one eleven with pick one eleven in the 2019 FF Dynasties. Mock it up before you fuck it up. The Hershey Squirts with Ertz at the end of it because he's built around uh, Zachary. <laughs> uh, he's on the clock. Big Co, you're up. What you What you gonna do? Okay. Okay. Well. I'll go ahead and uh, get it get right to it since last time I drug it out a little too long. I went Miko Hardman here at 111. Carry um, Miko Hardman. He does have her Ertz, like you said. Um, he's got a sneaky Vance McDonald coming into the year without Antonio Brown. I like the uh, potential for Vance McDonald. Sneaky, sir. Um, taxi Squad, DJ Chark. Could have told him not to go there. Yeah. Uh, but he's got Dallas Goddard to back up Ertz. A solid combination. Injured reserves got a name in there called Cooper Cup. That looks good. Cooper. Move up the list here. He's got Michael Thomas. Curtis Samuel, sneaky good coming into the year. He's getting some love now. Stephon, Give me all the Curtis Samuel. Stephon baby. Diggs. Um, Tyrell Williams. did get he got, he got beat out of Kareem Hunt down the end of the year, so that sucked. He, he lost Kareem Hunt going down the stretch there, So was, and, and he's going to have him gone for the first half of the year at least now. So we're a little iffy on the running backs Struggling there. in the back department. Tr- struggling in the running backs department. Um, and I, really, I, this was my last pick in the first round for, for this draft here. So I had to get Hardman in just to get him in this conversation. So this dude probably needs to be taking a running back here. And in my eyes, Hardman should be gone before this, just as if that's the way you want to play it. I'm going to be playing it, and Hardman's not going to make it past 111 if I'm in the draft. But this guy could have gone running back for sure. Um, but I had to get Hardman in here so we could talk about him. <laughs> uh, you know, you can you can say all you want about how they he he's not, um, he's not Tyreek Hill and this and that, like they're – Fairly athletically comparable. Obviously, mm-hmm. I, I, Tyreek Hill's a little faster, maybe a little stronger, in the burst. maybe a little tougher, maybe a little better three, wide receiver. In the three cone but drill. At the end of the day, Andy Reid takes this guy in the second round, and that's enough for me. I did respect what Hardman had going on in his game. SEC guy, game cut guy, saw, fair, and Georgia's just obviously everybody's favorite team to put on TV these days. So, saw a ton of Hardman play. More, more. Hardman than most other college teams, if you know, if not Gamecocks watching some Georgia game, watching their running backs come to life, and then you see Hardman get the ball and he's electric. And you plug him into the the role; it's pretty easy to see the usage c- questionable. So, as far as going to the Chiefs, how much will they use him? How quickly will they actually plug him in there and try to target him and make him a difference maker? Or will they just make him run around real fast and stretch things out for other people? Not sure, but I'm taking a swing any chance I get. Yeah, I mean, at 111, I'm I'm down with with taking a shot on Hardman. It's for me, it comes down to like I I, I get the I'm fine with you saying, hey, my rationale is just Andy Reid in the second round, and uh, you know, on the Chiefs, and there's we don't really know what's going to go on. And there's a lot up in the air. I'm fine with that, but. I think it needs to be around this area and not not super high because I question that the player is a little questionable to me. Like I don't I don't believe in this guy too too much. I think he hasn't been playing the position long only only two or three years. So I'll give him that. Yeah, he came into um, he was a quarterback in high school right and, for four years and then came in as a cornerback, played cornerback for the first year at Georgia, and then they switched him over to slot receiver, which he immediately started getting play. Yeah. I don't think he's a bad player. He's just obviously not to rekill, in my opinion. There's only one to rekill. Like, I mean, to be a four-two-eight guy is really special. Um, and just 
the the toughness and tenacity and burst and all these other things that Tyreek Hill shows me. I don't necessarily see that from Hardman. I see a fast player. I see a fast player that needs to be developed, and it might be a little bit before he's ready to go and be a fully developed player uh, to reach his max potential. So that's why I want to keep him down a little lower than, than going up high because I don't see it as like, oh, well, you need a player. There is definitely a high ceiling there. I just don't think he's ready to be plugged in and be the guy of a of a of of somebody who's up at the top there who, A, Tyreek Hill could be back by the time this guy's developed right. and, and ready to go, and they could have two or three other guys in front of him at that point. Like, I... I just I, I don't necessarily believe in the player. I like the situation and I and I like the where he got drafted. I like all those things, so I'm okay with taking a flyer with him here. I'm just I want to keep him down in the like I want Paris Hilton to be or Paris uh, Campbell to be <laughs> off the board, Paris Hilton and Debo Samuel to be off the board uh, before well, before I take my shots. Before at, Jay Wayne gets going, I, like you, I mean, yeah, four two eight is special, but a man, man's four three three. So you're talking about five hundredths of a second. That's a lot. It's a lot when it, when you're that fast, though. That's not that like, much. It four, a four four five there's not, sounds so much faster than four five zero. There's a lot of four three guys out there. There aren't too many four two guys out there. Yeah, four three three is not too too shabby. No, I'm not saying that it's shabby at all. That's the reason why they Second got fastest he's, wide receiver in this class. He's really fast. I'm just Tyree Kill is special. Third, third. Andy Isabella four three one. Paris Kim Campbell four three one. Isabella had four three one. Isabella's fast. I don't think he officially ran at the combine, did he? Who? I think it's uh, Isabella. It might have been a pro day time. I don't yeah. know if that was official. I see. Either uh, way. I see looking on DLF rookie ADP, which ADP is out the window, but because Miko Hardman's down at 16 for uh, this, it's an average. Okay. So that's what A stands for average draft position. Miko Hardman in some drafts in 80 and in, in, in this, this weekend where I was in, you know, saw seven rookie drafts go off myself. I took him one five, saw another person take him at one five and then, so I got him at 112, saw him go at 2-2 in a league where I didn't have yeah. a pick, and I spent every, I tried everything I could do to get back in there. I don't yeah. know. 2-2, uh, that, that might be a stretch. I don't know if I saw him past 112. In the, uh, in, we, we do a, a UDPL draft with the Dynasty Nerds and uh, Matt Kelly and, DL, and uh, DHH and the Dynasty Trade Calculator and uh, the Dynasty Trade Addicts and... Um, multiple other people 12 mainly super flex and we were doing everything we could it's it's a super flex draft so we were, we were around two four we were trying to trade back in and either get hardman or butler yeah we're trying to pull and, off of and trade i tried to, two i was picks. trying to get, trying both to get both of them and the the guy who eventually uh rotobon uh roto librarian i think is his twitter handle um we were trying to get we were trying to get both Hardman and Butler, so I don't mind trying to pick those guys up. I ended up we ended up trading for Butler, but he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't come off a of Hardman. Uh, we were trying to trade for his pick, and we couldn't work something out. And then he took him, and I continued to try to get him, and right, I, I right. beat him to death with next year's seconds and moving back to my pick, and then an extra third. And he Good eventually was done. like, "This is a good deal. I just want to hang on." Which yeah. you know, eventually we got something done for Butler, but more than a ticket to the show. Some people do, some people don't, and I do. I, again, like I'm, I'm down with getting a ticket to the show. It just has to be down here in the right spot for me. I'm not gonna. Uh, I like Paris and Debo and the and the tight ends and uh, and DK and all those guys. Before I want to roll the dice on this guy. Yeah, I, I would for sure agree with that. With with taking those three guys over this him and then AJ Brown, you know, is still on the board. And if it wasn't for the situation, I probably would hands down take AJ Brown ahead yeah. of them. Uh, but I, I, I can understand here if you want to take Miko, uh, nickname, by the way, grandma and mom gave him that. It's actually Carrie is his first name. So I guess I understand why he goes by Miko. Uh, <laughs> Carrie, not, not to be confused with, uh, <laughs> uh, that one really tickles you, huh? Yeah. I gotta loves get it, it in. Gotta loves get it, it in. Loves it. Um, speaking of, of, of Harry, this guy's, uh. All right, that's one of the knocks is the drop rate. It's 128th. The hands are a little suspect. Seven drops on 93 targets. Um, just wanted to get that in right there. But, I mean, I've just defended Hakeem Butler, who has a worse drop rate than this guy. <laughs> uh, so don't take don't put too much stock in well, that. Well, if you didn't tell us about his drops, it would not go along with the last seven receivers we talked about. Right. right. So at first I wanted to be like, ah, who's McCole Hardman? This, like, it's 
no one knows anything about him. And then and then it's even more frustrating when you try and go find out things about him because there's only like three games you can watch. Uh, ultimately, this dude just didn't have very much production. I mean, DJ, DK Metcalf had more catches in his career than this guy, so that's really saying something. Uh, he, But he just started playing wide receiver, which is right. pretty crazy to think about that he just started playing wide receiver. And this problem is not... Uh the problem of production is not uh, uncommon to a, in a Georgia kind of system where they have a lot of good players. Right. Um, along with multiple other systems where they have a lot of really good players. And every once in a while, you get the guy who comes in there who's the Julio at Alabama or uh, who's the Jerry Judy or, you know, they got a whole bunch of good guys over there right now. But so do, you know, so does out, so does uh, Georgia every year. They got right. a bunch of good receivers. So Riley Ridley doesn't necessarily have the production. I will say when I was and watching Hardman, Riley Ridley keeps popping up. And I'm like, damn, that good, that guy can run some routes and yeah. a ton of backs that can get the ball right. over on both, and over right. again on Georgia and Bama and, yeah. you know, other teams too, but I'm just, and good enough teams where they're playing ahead for most of their games. And there's no reason to pass for yeah. the most part. Like those types of things need to play in the people's process and thought process, but they normally don't. They right. just want to, Hey, they oh. just, well, when Julio was there, he was, yeah, of course. So, I mean, it's Julio it's freaking like Julio. Yeah. When, come on. So this guy is pretty much probably the rawest wide receiver of all of these guys. Uh, one plus is that the metrics community doesn't like him, so I, I kind of like that. <laughs> um, but it's because he, he had a bad college dominator, and he doesn't even have a breakout age. So, so does he not have a birth certificate? Or No. <laughs> In order to have a breakout age, you have to have accumulated 20% or more of your team's receiving yards in a season. And then whatever age you were when that happened determines your breakout age. Oh, well, there's age. no way he could be good then. Right. Because you're just wrong. No chance. Right. <laughs> Terrible pick. No, uh, but what I mean, but what you can see from him in the games that you that you are allowed to see and watch, you know, he he has a really good vertical push. He's obviously really fast. There's twitchiness to his movements. You know, he's got he's got that time remapping ability where he can, for a split second, just slow everything down and sort of lull you to sleep at the top of his break. Jay Wayne just hit you with a video editing yep. drop. Yep, oh. I, I used it to describe D.D. Westbrook last year, um, but I mean. It just helps to the the subtlety of his change of direction. It's really hard to keep up with him, which he doesn't really run great routes because he's just not really a refined wide receiver, but his movements are to the point where he could develop into something right. good, I think. Yeah. Um, he just doesn't have which the is, experience. Which was leading me to say that it might be a minute before you right. actually get Which is like everybody wants to want. slot him into Tyree Kill, but I think it's going to take him a minute to learn, which Andy Reid, if you if you keep up on Roto World, they're already talking about how they try to teach him some routes, and he was t terrible off the rip, but then he started getting it, but it's like he Trial by fire, baby. Right. But he, he doesn't know these routes, and like he can't... It's, it's impressive what he did at Georgia to come from playing a cornerback, to, which he didn't want to play cornerback. He was kind of bummed about it. His dad made him stay. He wanted to transfer out of Ohio State, but his dad was like, nah. Um, out of Georgia? Right. Sorry. Paris Campbell in the brain. Um, but, I mean, he's got a good family life. His parents, you know, drive him pretty hard, and they put, a good, they put an emphasis on grades. He was an honor student uh, in, in high school, graduated with honors. Um, so I can see how he's, he's adjusting and acclimating faster than you would normally think. Um, but he's just back to Tyree Kill. Like there, there wasn't too many contested catch opportunities that you get to see. I think I counted like four. He didn't come up with any of them. Mm -hmm. Like he just, he's not going up and winning in the air, or not necessarily in the air, but like deep in the end zone, he gets hands on his on the ball, but it doesn't. He doesn't come up with it. Like Tyree Kill comes down with pretty much all of those balls. Doesn't matter if he's about to land on his head, he's catching it. Right. And so he's and just, it took Tyree Kill a minute to to come into being. I mean, as but that's kind of what he did off the rip was just. I'm just catch I'm balls just saying, like even as how spectacular it took him a minute to really develop into the Tyree, dude. Tyree Kill didn't have a breakout age. I uh, just thought that was a. a but anyway, jab there. but I mean, I I just don't know that you're going to see this return on your investment as fast as people are expecting it. And I think by the time I mean you already alluded to it, Tyree Kill could be back by the time this guy figures it out, and then. I mean, it's good for Maybe. the Chiefs' offense, but I just don't know that it's going to be ridiculous ROI for your fantasy draft. But I'm still fine with taking this cut. I do like him more after looking more into him than I did just off the rip. Uh, but I'm, I'm I'm down here at 111. I don't th I can't put him up above any of those other guys. Well, let me not, let me just say I'm not going. I can't knock him for not being Tyreek Hill right this second. And that's fine. Like Nobody's you said, Casey, he's playing over there with Georgia. 
with Bradley Ridley and other players that aren't getting targeted often because that's not their system versus a all, Paris, all the guys he was playing with just got drafted Godwin versus a Paris Hilton Rid- who's Ridley. St- who Paris Hilton <laughs> you got you did it to me per- versus you know a Paris Campbell who's playing in a wide open system over there with who's getting a hundred and something targets in Ohio State doing work with him but he's being knocked for not being able to run anything but a, a drag you know so like yeah, he goes to play with luck, and he's an explosive guy, four three guy that takes it to the house every time he touches it. Pre- previous running back beast. All right, now he plays with luck, and he's up here because he has this production, but he has these targets to go along with it. And Hardman, a recent position change, an honors graduate in high school, quarterback, four year starter, goes to play with Patrick Mahomes. And right, like, that's why he's getting drafted here. Exactly. That's why I'm getting. That's why he's getting drafted for right here with me and higher with me. Like that's so. If if, if he but here's if he didn't thing. go to the Chiefs, he would wouldn't be anywhere if, near where he's getting drafted. If right he now. if once it when somebody hits, it doesn't matter where you got him in your rookie draft. You no. wish you'd have drafted him earlier. And so I'm not going to be sitting around being like, man, I should have taken Hardman when I had a chance. Anytime I get a chance, I'll be happy to jump on Hardman. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't. Half these guys aren't going to work out anyway. So I'm all right taking a huge swing on Hardman. That's how I want to play my rookie draft. So I'm I'm all in on Hardman. Yeah, I can't say I'm all in. Yeah, I, I, I understand it. I'm fine on this back half. I'm, I'm taking all those other players above him. And, and I, I think he's going to do probably more for the team than he will for your fantasy team because he is a good punt. He's a good punt and kick returner. Uh, he averaged 9.4, 8.4 yards after catch. Um, compared to Paris, who had 9.4, which you don't see a ton after the catch on film, but it's there because the numbers are there, but you just, there's only three games you can watch. So I, you do see him tri- get tripped up from behind, and, and it doesn't look like he's as filthy as like Tyree Kill is after the catch either. Yeah, that so, was one of my – like he just – he doesn't seem like he's – He's very tough with the ball in his hands. Like there's a lot of like just hand swipes that are bringing this guy down, whereas that's, with Tyree Kill, that ain't happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just right here for me. I can't be all in. And no, no, I'm 100. percent But you get you get to this point in the draft, I'm all in. But big, you know, I'm I'm not upset with you if you want to go a little higher. But I I I can't personally do it, just on the fact of you know Andy Reid and being in this office. At some point, it's got to come down to the player for me. And for the player for me, it's not. I don't. I want the other guys above him, not just system fit. Like right now, I'm in the spot where it can come down to a system fit and I'm ready to go and take a guy who uh, the a player that I'm that I like less than some of these other guys but he's in a really good situation. Sure. Well, like I said last week, there's once you get past supposedly the big 4, you it's where where's your flavor, mm-hmm. you know? And again, I said it last week, you know. I mean, Jay I, Wayne just took Hakeem Butler, so I mean Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, how you feeling? Who yeah. you want? Who you want on your team? Yeah. Because it's only time will tell which order these should have guys should have gone out anyway. Hakeem's no. good is so good. Hakeem's good is really good, and so I I don't I I'm not upset with you if you take any of these guys that we've talked about in the last four or five picks. You can jumble them all up. Who who do you want? Who do you feel good about on your team? And then sometimes you do play all right. Well, like I said with the Fant pick, like I feel like in a tight end premium league, Fant was on the board. That team needed a little bit of everything. It didn't really matter. And you take a fan, and A, he could break out year one because of the situation and what he can do, and B, you got the asset moving forward. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we got one more pick to go to. Let's uh, finish this first round out. 